Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the navigation as well as automatic pilot systems of the F-18 over here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, when you're operating this aircraft, I've gone ahead and frozen ourselves here so we can kind of do things nice and easily. We have plenty of time to think about things. There are multiple different ways you can use to navigate this aircraft. Uh, the simplest method is going to be your classic dead reckoning and pilotage. You also have the ability to dial in waypoints that you can go ahead and access using your little HSI here. And you also have a really neat ability to actually use TACAN. Now what TACAN is, is a basically tactical air combat navigation. For those of you who are familiar with VOR, you've already experienced TACAN yourself. So what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be showing you real quickly how to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, disable my uh, freeze mode here. I'm going to go ahead and take myself to an offset course and just kind of pull myself to the side just a teeny tiny bit so I can show you exactly what this is going to look like. I'm going to go ahead and pull myself to the side. That's looking pretty good here. And while I'm off on the side, I'm actually going to go to the automatic pilot page. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and lock my altitude barometrically. So I'm going to press the belt button. Now, the moment you press the belt button, what's going to happen is you're going to automatically switch to HDG mode. HDG mode is just going to hold the last thing that you told it to do unless you come over here and press a button. Now, if you want to follow a specific heading, what you can do is you can come down here. You can switch this little teeny tiny knob. You'll notice my little heading bug right here is swinging around here. I'm going to go ahead and pull it just a tiny bit. Ah, it is the world's slowest heading bug. Come on, heading bug. You can do it. You can do it. Let's do it. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. And that was choppy. <laughs> So now I can come over here and press the H ATG button. It will switch to H cell, which will now give us the ability to go ahead and swing over to this particular side, which is actually pretty cool. Now, some of you are probably going, well, wait a minute, can you dial in a specific altitude? I don't know, let's try. <clears throat> nope, unfortunately, that is not an option. The next thing we have as far as options goes is we have this lovely button that says roll. So what roll does is it's basically going to hold the angle that the aircraft is. Think of this as kind of like a roll hold, whereas heading mode says whatever my current heading is, stick to it. Roll is whatever we're doing, go ahead and snap off. By the way, if at any time you want to shut these off, you just click on them, boop, and they're off. You'll notice, by the way, when we do shut the things off, it goes to the FPAH mode. FPAH, I always like to think of as flight path hold mode. Now, for example, let's go ahead and kill the automatic pilot completely. I'm going to go ahead and lift the nose up like this. I'm going to reach down and press FPAH. So now you're noticing the aircraft is holding the current heading it was just on, and it's holding its flight path as well. So it's actually going to stay at this angle until basically I stall out, which is not really desired in this case. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt the plane, get it tilting, Press flight path. Now notice it's going to hold this uh, basically pitch right here. And I'm going to press the roll button. So you'll notice this aircraft is now locked itself into this neat little circle that it's got itself in right now. Now if I wanted to cancel that effect out and just hold my current heading, what I could do here is I could dial in a heading and then press the H cell button. Now what's going to happen is eventually it's going to overturn itself like it does here, which is a little funky because the real one probably was not going to have that exact undesirable characteristic. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this thing back out again, go ahead and press belt, go switch to H cell. And now the aircraft is going to come pulling itself all the way back around to its original heading. And it's going to get us in a pretty safe spot here. Now, there is no automatic throttle simulated on this particular version of the aircraft. Believe it or not, we do have an automatic throttle on this particular aircraft. Yeah, I don't want to cage my hood here. But what you would do is if you're doing like a carrier landing, there's a neat little button right here that allows you to actually press that button. Now, what I'm curious to see here is uh, to see, does it actually work? Let's go ahead and push it and see what happens. Ha-ha! It works! <laughs> So the automatic throttle now is going to maintain a constant speed. Now, my understanding is in the other F-18s, like the F-18, A, B, and C, the way that the automatic throttle actually works is it will hold a constant angle of attack by adjusting your engine power. So it's primarily used for the purposes of doing approaches, not just for kind of tooling around like I am right now. We'll go ahead and snap on B cell. Uh, we've got our H cell. We're slowly making our way all the way over there so that we can go ahead and grab it. Press that sucker, and we're going to come popping around just like that. Now, if we want to disable the automatic throttle, we can just come over here and boop. And now we can see that we have the throttle controlled back to ourself. So what I'm going to do is give this thing a little bit of a nudge. I'll kind of bring ourselves back over to where we are. Line ourselves back up at that previous position. Go ahead and bop the belt. And go to H cell, and it should go ahead and snap ourselves back. Of course, what I've probably done is tumbled some gyro or some internal code with playing with all the buttons. But hey, what are you going to do? next button we're going to be interested in is this neat thing called G-Track. Now, what G-Track will do is it holds you on a constant ground track. 
So if I'm pointing towards the north and I want this aircraft to continue towards the north, I can reach down here and press the G-Track button to go ahead and lock onto that. And it should theoretically hold me at a constant ground track for that particular position. You can see right now it's fitting against the wind here, trying to find the right angle the aircraft is going to have to travel at in order to safely get through. So I'm going to go back to belt button. We'll go ahead and hold a 22400. Now, one of the coolest buttons on here is this one at the tippy top, which is called CPLWPT. What this does is it locks onto your current waypoint. You're saying, well, what pain point am I looking at? Well, let's take a look. Over here on my HSI, you'll notice I have the ability to press the whip button, and I can go ahead and select my digital waypoints. You've got to put your waypoints into Flight Simulator before you can actually select them. You can see I'm about five minutes away, and this is my current heading. Now, if I wanted the aircraft to follow this, I reach over here and press Couple Waypoint. What's going to happen is immediately this little box is going to pop up and say Couple Waypoint. If this is flashing at you, that usually means you have a problem. Now, you probably noticed that I sat a little bit low inside my chair here. The reason for that is if you take a look at your heads-up display, now normally in the real world, when you get closer to it, and I'm not going to worry about it too much. <laughs> and that's actually accurate. So what you'll notice is you've got this little vertical bar right here. This little vertical bar indicates where your waypoint is. So you can see as our aircraft is turning to the left towards it, you're all of a sudden going to see that this vertical bar will go ahead and center itself right underneath the carrot. Notice it's not following the flight plan, it's following the flight waypoint. Now it's just kind of a weird little thing there. Another nice thing too is when you're in couple waypoint mode is you're going to get this little digital display right here which is going to tell you exactly how far away you are from that waypoint. In this case, I can actually see where the airbase is right there. So that's one of the great features of this aircraft. Now, what I could do is I could leave it in couple waypoint button, take it out of belt mode. I could do something like this, pull it up, press FPH, and now it's going to go ahead and lock onto that as well. So it's just kind of a neat little automatic pilot. So like, oh, I want to hold this altitude. Whoa, conk, ow, just have a head on the ceiling. Ow, ow, that hurts. So it's one of those things that you have to watch out for as well. Okay. So getting past all the autopilot, let's go ahead and take a look at the crazy features, which is going to be our navigation features. So I'm going to go back to the CNI page. So you've already seen how the couple waypoint works and how we can go ahead and automatically follow a waypoint. Now, by the way, I mentioned in the last video, you can use a GTN 750 to dynamically enter waypoints. What if we wanted to go ahead and use a TACAN instead? Well, TACAN's a little bit more involved. It's a little bit like VOR, but it's a little simplified, but it's not simplified, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. First things first, you need to know the TACAN frequency. So I like to press the TCN button. I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's on TR, otherwise we're not going to get any range. And you're simply going to dial in the particular frequency you want. In my case, I'm going to do 77 X-Ray. If you want a 77 Yankee, you can just click right here to switch between the modes. You're going to have to look up the frequency in order to see that. As soon as I do that, you'll make sure TR is on, you make sure the on switch is on, and now you're going to get a new designation. I'll go ahead and pause myself in the air here. You'll notice this gives me the heading to the TACAN site. You're going to notice this gives me the distance, and this is going to give me the total time to get to that point. It's also going to give me the identifier. In this case, it's going to be TCN. Now, normally with this particular aircraft, what you could do is you could switch to a mode where you could draw the TACAN here, and what you could come do is come down to the course switch, and you could actually change the angle of the TACAN that you're following, such as changing like the CD or the OBS, that's what I should say, for a regular aircraft. Unfortunately, we don't have that capability inside of Microsoft at this time. But the good news is we still have the ability to use TACAN as our primary reference point. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and um, unpause this for a second here. There we go. And you can see now that TCN has been selected, not the waypoint that has been selected. So what makes that so cool, let's go ahead and go to my GTN 750. Let's go ahead and unconfuse the autopilot, though. It's about to get very, very grumpy at me in a second. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and pick a different destination. So I'll go direct to. I'll go ahead. Oop, cancel. Let's go direct to. Let's just I'm do something really absurd here. Could you imagine flying there? I don't think so. Not in this aircraft. Actually, I think we could land on it. If we did a land, carry landing, we could probably make it work. So I'll press that one out. Uh, you're going to identify it. That looks good. Uh, direct two, unfortunately, does not have the button to push it. There it is. Nice. So it's going to go ahead and delete that waypoint. So now if I click on waypoint mode, you'll see it's way off course. If I press on tack hand mode, you'll notice that it still shows the tack hand's position because I have selected it here. So now I can take myself right to the goal. And notice in the bottom right corner of our little heads up display, we still have the ability to know exactly how far away from that destination we have. Now, one thing everybody asks, of course, is they're like, well, that's great and everything. Um, what if I want to do an IELTS approach? Hmm. 
This is me shaking my pilot's head right here. Now, many Navy aircraft are not equipped with an ILS. Now, the reason they're not equipped with an ILS is because the Navy uses its own system. It's called an ICLS, depending on what generation the actual carrier or what generation the aircraft actually is. Because of that, we don't have the ability to do an ILS approach directly. Now, that's kind of unfortunate because we could certainly change all the frequencies that we need to. As a matter of fact, if we go pop up my GTN real quick, you'll notice my nav frequency is an ILS frequency, but I have no way to do it unless... <laughs> I warned you. So there will be no ILSs, at least in this time. So we won't be able to fly those kind of approaches. If you do want to fly one of those approaches, the unfortunate <laughs> error, unfortunately for us, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to basically fly it by hand, or we're going to, you know, kind of hope that things work out okay. So looking right off my window here, I can see Barnes Air Force Base, but uh, we'll save the landing for the next video. Hopefully this helps you folks out as to explore this aircraft. Um, I think it's, like I said, pretty sophisticated. By the way, there are charts out there that can convert any VOR into its respective TACAN frequency. I'm not going to link to that because you can pop it on Google super fast and head over to it. But other than that, enjoy.